Like, how would I spell Vogue with, like, with the omelet? No, that'd be fog. Like, how would I spell it? And I'm like, Vogue, duh. It's got some bitterness, it's got some sweetness to it, but more importantly, it's strong, it's independent. Wow, he just described me. It's strong. Vogue's. Vogue's, yeah. Vogue's. Strike a pose. Yes, exactly. Okay. Strike a pose, <laughs> like Benny Walker. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the show. As always, this is a show about F-ups, about making mistakes, about thinking maybe you'll never recover again, but you do recover and you come back even stronger. I think that this is, these are the stories that we like to hear when we hear success stories in the end. And today we're going to be talking to Patty Curtis. She has an art studio in Seattle, something that she started on her own when she saw that she was not being part of a world that she wanted to be a part of. And it is an art studio for people over the age of 50. They're doing some remarkable work down there. Can't wait to talk to her about it. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I've got Patty Curtis here who runs Fogue Studios in Georgetown, Seattle, Washington. Neighborhood. That's like a neighborhood. It's like a neighborhood south of downtown. I opened up a, an art gallery and studio space for folks over the age of 50. Okay. And it kind of came about when I got laid off at 53 from my big corporate marketing product development job and um, couldn't find work, couldn't find an interview at 53. And I'm like, I'm yeah. <laughs> Um And so I was like, it, and it was kind of scary. And so I went back to my roots, which was um, fine art and I started making art. I sold 13 pieces of art out of a restaurant in West Seattle. Oh, wow. Um, and I thought, you know what? This could be a thing. And I want to do something for my people over the age of 50. And so yeah. I started um, with a domain name yeah. from GoDaddy. With um, I, I looked up Fogue Studios, Fogue Gallery. Like, how would I spell Fogue with, like, with the omelets? No, that'd be Fog. Like, how would I spell it? And I'm like, Vogue, duh. And uh -huh. I'll steal their logo. Oh, yeah, yeah, Perfect. yeah. yeah. Um, and so I wanted to be like cool old people, so I called it Vogue for old fogies, because you know. <laughs> so I'm going to take just... I'm going to take Vogue and and, uh, and fogies. Co combine it with fogies, and all I'm going right, to be Vogue. Right. In fact, my my end game goal when I die, I want Vogue to be in the dictionary under like creative, cool, old person over fifty. <laughs> That's my goal. Well, I'm I'm close. I'm like five years away. Oh, don't even start. And then You're I could done. like I could come in. You I could, could swoop a, in. Maybe with my... it could be you could be a faux Vogue. A faux folk. Faux folk. A fake folk. Right. Yeah. What do I got to do to be a fake folk? A little more gray at the temples. Little, yeah. I can yeah. put it in. Yeah. 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 It's coming. Yeah. If I grow the beard. Maybe a little crabbier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in my day, yeah. we used real maps. And you need some fake ID to get an AARP card. Okay. No, I, I got you so you have fine arts background originally? I did. Yeah. Um, I went to Cornish College of the Arts on Capitol Hill. It was a really great school. I had a great um, time there. And then I had a baby. Oh, okay. And I married an artist. Yeah. And so the rest is history that I had to actually get a real job. <laughs> um, and so I ended up working my way into a corporate career in cosmetics in the beauty industry. Okay. Cosmetics and hair care. And um, just worked into like this big executive job where I ended up traveling all over the world. And I was going to Paris and Milan. And, oh, wow. And China. And then all of a sudden it was gone. Yeah. And so I, I came back. I was living in L.A. and I came back up to Seattle. Yeah. Um, I'm basically from here. And I just, I couldn't even get an interview. Yeah. And it freaked me out. It really scared me of just being, I was only 53. Yeah, and you've been all and, over the world. And I had a really so great portfolio. I had yeah. great experience, um, I had great recommendations, and yeah. it just, it was crickets. Huh. And so I thought, oh my gosh, I gotta figure out something and do my own thing. I just felt like I needed to do something for my community. Yeah. And maybe this is the time that I can really do something that, you could do it. that that not only is something that's for me that satiates me, but really is something for my community. Yeah. And it and it turned out that there's such a huge need for it. Yeah. Beyond my wildest dreams of of how um, it's grown and just it's been just over a year. All right, you ready? You ready for a drink? Uh, yes. <laughs> I woke um, up ready. Okay. Yeah. I was born ready for drinking. <laughs> uh, all right, Jack. Uh, what do you got for us? Thanks, Sean. Tonight we have the Black Dahlia. Uh, we're going to start with the Black Dahlia with a little bit of St. George dry rye gin. It's a rye based gin. We're going to start only with a half an ounce. And then we're going to move over to our uh, special edition Woodenville Whiskey Company White Dog. It's barrel strength, 110 proof. I use it primarily for making bitters, but knowing that uh, Patty is into whiskey, I figured two ounces of some uh, white lightning's not that bad. 
And then we have uh, a half ounce each of our apricot liqueur from Rothman's and Winter. And uh, Swee's gentian aperitivo. And then we have a uh, house made rich simple from sage and rose hips and demerara sugar. Half ounce of that as well. Grapefruit bitters, two dashes. And then we have a little bit of uh, activated uh, carbon, a little bit of charcoal. And last but not least, an ounce of calamansi juice. It's a Filipino lime. Secure our lid, make sure our strainer's in place, and give her a good shake. A little bit of kewl water, which is a Middle Eastern ingredient. So it just gets a little bit of a rinse on the glass there. We don't want to turn the whole drink into a bouquet of flowers. And then I find strain everything just because I think it helps the mouth feel if you have nothing uh, impeding the flow of booze to thine lips. A little bit of amethyst, some dried flowers, and my favorite, a dahlia. It's a little bit of sculpture, a little bit of olden times. It's got some bitterness, it's got some sweetness to it, but more importantly, it's strong, it's independent. Wow, he just described me. It's strong. <laughs> <laughs> Bitterness, sweetness, strong and independent. And it's so artistic. I really appreciate that, Jack. Your face is. Oh. Do you hear that? I'm a little jealous. That I won't was, lie. That was a bit of a panty dropper right Yeah, there. that was great. Yeah. 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 Your you face is. should use that all the time. You probably do. Nah. <laughs> Everything's original. One time lines, one time <laughs> lines. It's just for you. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy. Are you ready? Yeah, I, okay, yeah, I'm shaky. I, I shouldn't be shaky. Jack only makes, I know it's gonna be delicious. Yes. I know it's gonna be good. Okay. I know I'll want another okay. one. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but, Clearly but I'm, I'm new nervous. To it. Okay, so okay. I'm. All right, I'm gonna do this though. I'm gonna take a bite know, of this. This is gonna stab me right in the eye if I try to yeah. do that. Are you gonna uh, do that, really? Uh, okay, I got one. Uh, all right. I'm not gonna, right, wait, you're not uh, gonna like shoot it, are you? I, you're gonna sip no, it, right? No, I'm gonna sip it. Oh, thank God. Wait, we don't shoot this. That's well, a lot of shooting. When they say pick your poison, it's also how you administer. Okay, it. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I got. Now so I would suggest like, you to. You, but cheers. Cheers. Well, you've got one. Well, that's delightful. Yeah, I'm. There was a lot of pomp and circumstance. <laughs> I'm cosmopolitan now. This is really like, delicious, once I try Jack. It. This is really good. Yeah. It's got gin in it's it. It's like you want. It it's does got it? gin in it. Does. I told you I wasn't a gin girl. I know. Yeah. Juniper. Jun juniper. <laughs> I started a company called Jet City Girl, and um, I was and went. And swear to God, went to GoDaddy, got my got my domain. Jet was it JetCityGirl.com? Yeah. Wait, is this still? Is this still? Is there I let it go. On there? I let oh, it go. Okay, okay, okay. Um, which is and somebody should snatch that up because Seattle's the Jet City, and so I did this line of body care products. Yeah. And jewelry. Why don't you have JetCityGirl.com now? Like, why are you not still doing that? Well, because work? that was 12 years ago and it failed miserably. Yeah. I mean, I spent my 401k money on buying product that sat in my basement that was gifts for people. That you couldn't you couldn't get rid of. No, because I didn't I didn't do anything. I didn't do it right. I don't. I think I just was depressed and afraid. It was the recession. Yeah. My house was going into foreclosure. My kid got in a, you know, got it, had a seizure. I know, it was just like, just my dog got ran over. It was like a country western song. What? It was just a storm. Oh, it was wow. just a really, really down Dolly low, Parton would be proud. Just, yeah. Just a terrible point in my life. And so I just didn't feel like I could go door to door to sell it. Nobody's gonna want it. Wait, were you gonna go door to door to I didn't sell know what, it? What was I gonna, yeah, what was I gonna oh, wow. do? Like you have to like, you that make a really, product. That was really like judgmental you, of me. I'm like, what? You're gonna go door to door to sell it. I mean, but did you go door to door? I did like sell it to some stores. Yeah. But I tell you what, I did do is I brought it to my interview and got me a job in the in my next beauty company oh, it did. that I worked for. Yeah. Like, I said, like, and this is my line that I made, and I put it in a gift bag, and I gave it to them, and here's my website, no and I did it way. all myself. And well, because they didn't yeah. know how much you'd sold, right? They no, were like, that I that I'd given away more than I'd sold. <laughs> yeah. There were like so that. many things that I that I didn't do. Yeah. Um, that I I just really screwed up. So then. I decided to open an antique store. What? <laughs> yeah, I had an So you went store. from doing that, from the beauty line stuff, to yes, opening up an antique store? Because my first degree was in interior design. And so I really love interior design. Yeah. And I love old stuff. Yeah. And so um, I opened up this antique store in West Seattle. And so I started with this little shop. And then um, my friend said, hey, I've got this building in Soto, south of downtown. South of downtown. And I opened up this giant building. And there was no parking. Oh, no. Yeah. Duh. 
so you know what? It's like you've got to think of all these things. It was it was so many things that you do when you're an entrepreneur yeah, or try yeah, to be an yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. And I always had this drive to do my own thing because yeah. I've had some really yeah. bosses. Yeah. And and it's and it's not that I'm the smartest person in the world by far, but it, there's been times when I've been smarter than my boss. Yeah. And then they lie and then they take your work and yeah. like I've just had all of that crap happen, all of the yeah. um, sexism and bullshit that happens when you've been well, in business like, for 25 like, years. Well, like ageism type of thing and then, that comes and up, then right? And the, like, then it rolled into from sexism to ageism. It's like, well, <laughs> we don't find you sexy anymore, but we do find you old and that offensive. That you're, you're old and offensive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. <laughs> Stop making jokes about the 80s. <laughs> Seriously. Get don't out. Don't talk about Three's Company again. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs>uh, the most is, you know, like, like creativity goes up with constraints. So right. if you have like, that, like if you, if you want to write a sonnet or if you, uh, want to write a haiku, right, you've got the constraints on it. You were forced into constraints Yeah. and then, then had to get creative in order to be successful or do what you love based on those constraints. Um, and that takes us to what you're doing now. Yeah. So yeah. folk studios, folk studios, the yeah. fo old fogey Vogue the, yeah. type of thing. The old fogey Vogues. Um, yeah. What are they? Tell me, tell me more about it. Like, uh, like, what does it look like? What's going on? Like, well, like, you know, I started with just a website. I thought, you know what? I'm going to create this website. Yeah. And um, I uploaded my profile on it. I uploaded um, my boyfriend Bill's profile. Yeah. He's a filmmaker, and so we had two people on it. And then yeah. I started going to gallery openings. I said, Hey, I'm doing this website, and you're a really cool artist, and you seem like a cool person. Do you want to be part of this? movement I'm trying to do. Now, like, was it only a website at that point? Only a website. A, oh, really? 100% only a website. And I had zero idea how I was going to monetize it. I was yeah. charging people to put their profiles up and um, got this group of about 14 people yeah. that were on my website. And um, they're like, yeah, that's cool. I like what you're doing. And then yeah. my friend who rented me the antique store, John Bennett, yeah. who owns a lot of buildings in Georgetown, and he yeah. really is into preserving um, old buildings and creating things for entrepreneurs to run their businesses out. Yeah. So it keeps his rents low. Um, and he's just, he's a, he's a real entrepreneur in his own right in that way. And he said, we were sitting around, um, he goes, you know what you need? He goes, you need a, you need a store. You need a space yeah. for your studio and for a gallery. And I'm like, I do, don't I? <laughs> and, and I think it was like in the same breath, he said to me, I go, God, I'm just like struggling and I need to like try to sell more art. I got to figure out how to make more money. And he yeah. goes, you should sell more art. <laughs> you should. Are uh, you kidding me? That's hard. <laughs> right? God, I've, like, I've tried, selling hard, I've tried art to is sell hard. art. Selling like, art is hard. It's yeah. tough. It's not a get rich quick or slow scheme at, yeah. in any stretch. So, um, and I was, so I laughed when he said that. And three weeks yeah. later he goes, I have a building for you. No way. And I'm like, way. And he um, took me to this, this, um, the top floor of this building where there's two super cool uh, vintage furniture stores underneath, Kirk Albert and Susan Wheeler. Yeah. And it was one kind of 800 square foot room and then one little office space across the hall. Yeah. And he said, but in these other office spaces, as people leave, I'll let you take over the lease and you can lease them out to your folks. Yeah, Because yeah, now yeah, that yeah. there's a name for it. Your folk, fogies. My folks. No. Yeah. Oh, no, fogs. no, no. Folks. 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 Yeah. Folks. Strike a pose. Yes, exactly. Okay. Strike a pose, like with your walker. We, were, we did a little video with that. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. yeah it was Strike fun. a pose with yeah. a walker? Yeah. <laughs> folk, folk. Strike a folk. pose. Folk, folk, folk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, I got, I brought my folks up there, and 12 out of the 14 said, Yeah, I'll do it. And yeah. so they rented a little wall space, and one person rented a studio, and it went from there, and then another uh, business would leave. And I would rent it to more folks, and I made more space, and then I rented out the hall space. And then the front of the building was this apartment um, with some very Burning Man people. <laughs> um, <laughs> they were not they were not loving the folks in oh, their okay. space because they like to be very loud. They're and I was not like, into that. Yeah. They just weren't into it. Yeah. And um, so when their lease came up, boy, they were mad. But we took over the whole floor. So from June of 2018. Yeah. And I took over the entire floor by January of 2019. Holy we opened moly. up 6,000 square feet. Yeah. Now we have 37 artists. I have 30 people on a waiting list. Yeah. We're booked through 2020. So do you, do you know all, so when you had the original, mm -hmm. how many, 14? Is that what you said yeah. you started with? Yeah. Did you know them all? No, cold or, called. Are no. you serious? Went out and met them. 
Yeah. No way. Yeah. Just went out and like met that's people. the most exciting thing mm -hmm. in the world when you start a business where or yeah. an idea or whatever that it's not just your relatives. No, or it your just started. It started network. from just this little. Honestly, it's it all started with a little website. <laughs> Um, but and and not to be gr gratuitous or cheesy or anything, but I've really been using GoDaddy in my career for years because a friend of mine that I worked with, I worked for a dot com in the um, early two thousands. He's like, yeah, just go and GoDaddy dot com and see if somebody has that domain. Get the domain name. Yeah. Moving forward. Uh, like, what are you doing with uh, with Folk Studios? Where do you where do you hope to take it moving forward? Uh, well, um, we have a solo showroom, okay. which is pretty awesome. So we have guest yeah. shows. So right now, is it like like big? It's, small, it's about like three hundred square feet. Okay. okay yeah, okay. and it's got its own little it's its own space, so its own its own entity. Yeah. So it can be sound, light, action. So we've had some really cool installations there. So everything yeah. that I do is branded for over 50. So anybody that's in the solo showroom has to be over 50. Yeah. It's like really creating opportunity and experiences showing that if you're older, you're not a has-been or you're not wow. you're not uncool anymore. And a lot of the folks, I tell them that they're creating their own nightmare because like one woman's like, I don't want to know people, I want people to know that I'm 50. I'm like the 39 and holding bull. Yeah. It's like, I'm 56 now. Yeah. You know, whoo, uh oh, oh uh -oh. God, grandma. That's it. Grandma in the house. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's I, over. I, like, I it's agree, ridiculous. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's ridiculous. And it's really hard for women, I think, a little bit more than men. Uh, 100%. And 80% of our artists are women. Oh, that's fantastic. Interestingly. And it's not um, contrived that way. It just It's just kind of fallen into that, yeah. that sort of groove. Um, because there is less opportunity for yeah. women over 50 and 60 than there is for men. I have an exhibit coming in January from Jane Caminos that's called On Women Bound. And there's 24 paintings of women being marginalized and um, abused throughout the world. Yeah. So, and it's really intense. Yeah. And it's not, it, she's a beautiful painter and these paintings yeah. are so intense and dramatic, but I'm doing it during the Women's March. Yeah. And in that solo showroom, I'm gonna have um, the Women's March going on and speeches and, and everything that's going on for women in the Me Too movement and all yeah. that. I don't want that to get lost. No. And so that's our January, February show. So moving forward, I want to always create a space that is um, active and changing. We change our art out every two months. Um, we do classes there. We have um, art classes. Yeah. We just did a, um, a talk on Sunday night. Somebody came in and talked about art fairs and yeah. how he was successful and what he did and what he would do different. And, yeah. and so we're really supporting each other and lifting each other up. And so my whole goal, um, my end game, is to just create this community yeah. of um, a really supportive, cool place to go. And people of all ages come in there and they say, God, this place has a really good vibe. Yeah. I just want to hang out here. Yeah. I really like this place. This is cool. That's perfect. And it's really nice, you yeah. know, it's really, it's really cool. So you say that you're like marketing the shit out of this thing and I you're am. using social yeah. media. Yes. And I love, by the way, I love that you're using other people and their social media in order to do it because that's how it works, right? right? Like, yeah. So, so I post on social media every day, one time. I don't, Instagram? Instagram. And yeah. then I feed it into my Facebook. Yeah. Um, I find that doing just a little short blurb and I'll either do the artists of the day. Yeah. Um, I'll do a new artist or I'll do an event. But I make sure that I try to keep it interesting and fun. I don't say um, portrait of Sean, 18 by 24, <laughs> oil on canvas. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I do try to tell a little story because people relate to stories. Absolutely. Just like they do to humans, yeah, you know? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, everything yeah, is yeah. telling the story of our brand. Um, I think that every single thing that I do is super genuine yeah. and heartfelt. So I hope that it comes across that way because I mean every single thing that I'm doing. And it's really on purpose. Yeah. And it's not... Um, it's not to make a fast buck because trust me, if it were, I would not be doing this. Yeah, no, that um, totally it's, makes it sense. It totally comes from my heart and nothing makes me more happy than selling an artist's art or making them feel more important. Or yeah. like, I've had artists come up to me and say, you changed my life. You made me feel like I was important again. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. And well, I think like, there's so many people that like, want to be artists and, it, and it takes their whole life to try or to do that. And out, they're right? retired now. Yeah. And they want to take it up again. So I have um, established emerging, re emerging artists in our gallery. It's, yeah. But 100% of it is amazing, beautiful, yeah. high quality art. Yeah. Really good, really yeah. good artists. Yeah, I really do think, yeah, that changes the world. 
it, like art, I, art does something to, I just, to, just to wanna, people like, universally. One little thing, you yeah. know, if I can make somebody feel better. Yeah. Because I felt pretty crappy yeah. with what happened to me. Yeah. And it feeds my soul yeah. every day. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. I love what Thanks you're doing. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thanks. we'll see you. Bye. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's so good. I know. I need more peach. I know. I know. Right on. That was a lot of fun. And if you like seeing a lot of fun or you like what we're doing, then subscribe to the show and ring the bell. Uh, click on the bell because then you'll know when we're doing it again. And if you have a story, you have something you want to share with us, go to fups.com. Hope to see you on the show. <laughs>